beast, didn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm out of my boat, Molly Moo, my little 16 foot warrior. Um, and it's been doggy after doggy. First three drops now I've had dogfish. But where there's dogfish, there's rays. Look at that little stunner. Can you hear that? I'll put it near the mic. You hear him clicking his teeth. Tiny little one, little babby one. He's angry though. You can see he's retracted his eyes. His eyes have gone back in. He's all a bit upset. I say he. It is a small he. <laughs> he's not very well endowed. <laughs> he's trying to whip me with his tail. He's absolutely covered in spines. Try and hold him so you can see him, but try not to hurt him. There he is. Stunner. Lovely little fish. Tide's really pulling. Possibly got another fish on that other rod because it's loaded up. Fishing two pound weights, don't like them. Um, let's just get this one back in the water. See if we can get you a bit of footage of him going back. Right. Got to be careful of the spikes on this little one. Let's get him back. <laughs> oh yeah, and he was away. So I am fishing what I would class as heavy for South Coast really at the moment. It is a ugly stick. Uh, 30 to 50 pound rod, a TLD 20, 80 pound braid, 150 pound wind on leader. This is in case we get into any tote today. Um, I've got 150 pound running uh, ledger, or it isn't actually a running ledger, it's not an open ledger, it's actually locked in, it's a locked in ledger. And then about four, four and a half foot, 150 pound mono, just check it. Uh, with a 7.0 J pattern and that is a quick. So for this next bait that's going down, because I've had a few doggies and I'm trying to, a massive mackerel head with guts, blood and guts, through the nose, loads of hooks showing. And we will get that prepped for over the side. Excuse my back. We get it to the side of the boat so we don't clatter a big two pound weight off the gel coat of the boat. The last thing we put on is the weight. So we just clip the weight on, swing it clear of the boat. Tide's really racing at the moment, so two pound weights and um, big rods. I'm not even gonna put the smaller rods out at the moment because two pound weight on the end of one of those little 2030s it's, um, it makes it quite uncomfortable. I'm going to lift that rod in a sec, just because I'm curious. It looks like it's loaded up. It might be a dogfish. I'm hoping with this mackerel head on, I'm going to buy some time outside of the doggies. Because a doggy can't swallow a hop that mackerel head that big. Um, clicker on, as always. Let's have a quick look at this one. Just have a quick lift. <coughs> It's not even touching the bottom, so it's not fishing. Tide's lifting that. So that's now on the bottom. And we're fishing again. So, a nice start. All in, probably three doggies, I think, straight out. Literally, every drop, bang, bang, bang. Rattle, 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 dogfish, dogfish, dogfish. So I've sized up the baits. I've gone bigger on the baits. Um, anchored in about 95 feet of water south of the needles and I'm in amongst four boats. I'm flanked either side, one by a charter boat, private boat and a really nice private boat just to my stern port quarter. Absolutely excited today. I predict, because the tide's running out at the moment, when we get to slack low we might see some straps and then the turn of the tide for those two hours I think it's going to fish well. It's really calm benign conditions um, we'll be able to go down in weight side, be able to put another couple of rods over the side and yeah, see how it goes. Mackerel baits, I managed to get mackerel on the way out and they were a reasonable size. I mean they're in the cool box now so they're almost frozen. 
But that's what I was catching on the way out. And the fresh bait makes all the difference. Absolute massive difference. Um, also, as the tide drops off, I'm going to set a rod at 20 feet, put it up on the roof with a set of feathers on. Um, just to see if we can get some fresh live. A live bait would be amazing. Especially as this, I've had taupe from here before. Um, a live bait, I'd love to see a live mackerel. Um, if I manage to pick one up today, I will be really happy. No, I didn't see a bite on this rod. I literally just picked it up, lifted it to see if it was fishing on the bottom and I've lifted into a bit of weight. Now, it's difficult to tell. Could be a doggy just spiraling up in the current, you know what they're like. Or it might be another small ray, but it's not a, it's not a taupe or anything like that. It's not going, it's not going crazy. I would guess, oh, I don't know. It's all... <laughs> what is it? Whatever it is, it's in the current. I could see it in the background. It is a chicken oriental dogfish. Look at the size of that. Yeah. I'm not going to unhook it in the boat. He's going over the side. <laughs> Doggy almost in the boat. Oh, he's making a right old mess of everything. What we didn't want, young man. What we didn't want. Offy tiddly pop. And he's away. He's made a right old mess of that bait. But I'm not just going to burn through and waste bait today. It's been busy so far. If that's an indicator of how it's going to go, I'm going to dress this up a little bit. And. Nice flappy bait. Nice flowing bait. He seemed to like it. What meant for him though? Don't want too many of those doggies. I'm not going to do a doggy count, but that's that's already too many. Considering how this tide's ripping through, I'm surprised the doggies are on it actually. They usually come at slack. If they're here now, what are they going to be like at slack? Yeah, that's a little bit worrying. All right, let's get that locked in. Clicker on. Cloth from the hands. Rod set, and we're fishing. Lovely. All right, another doggy. I don't want too many of those today. As always, when you're least prepared, I've been taken unawares. I've got two rods going. This one has got. I'm guessing it might be a taupe. Um, and I've got four rods out the back, so I've got a set of mac because it's been so quiet, I've got loads of rods out, and it's the one time I don't want <laughs> something significant. And this feels like it's swimming, swimming well. Doesn't feel like a ray. Doesn't feel like a dogfish. Still quite a lot of line out. It was just short of a hundred feet down. I'm guessing this might be a taupe. The big question now is how big a taupe? And is he gonna get me tangled up? I'm pretty sure there's something on that other rod as well. I'm not as significant though. I've just been watching that one. Right, I'm into wind on leader. What have we got? Oh, it might be a ray. It might be a significant ray. Is this a nice blonde? No, what have we got? Okay, oh yeah, it is a blonde. I'm pretty sure it's a blonde. Because I'm fishing heavy, he's a smaller blonde. But blondes go well. What a little stunner. All right, bud, let's get you unhooked. Let's get you unhooked. Don't bite the hook. If you don't bite the hook, I can get you out. There we go. Whew. T-bar, absolute godsend. So he's not that 
big a blonde, but it's a blonde nonetheless. <laughs> they go well, bronze, for some reason. They seem to be that bit more feisty. Spots all the way to the edge. And they've got amazing, really detailed eyes. But yeah, look at that. Oh, it's getting a bit frisky. Yeah, the smaller ones always are. They are always the friskier. Look at that tail. It's up like a scorpion. <laughs> look at that. Absolute stunner. I love them. I think they're amazing. You're amazing, Beth. You are absolutely amazing. Look at those eyes. Like dragon eyes. What a cracker. Right. Let's get this one back. Let's get him straight back in. And he's away. He's away. He went off like a train. Should have I should have realised it was a ray bite because the difference really is rays tend to sit on a bait and you'll lift it, you'll feel the weight and then they'll go off like the clappers because obviously they've been disturbed. Um, but taupe, just slash and grab and run. Slash, grab, run, slash, grab. And they're the real beef boys down there. You know, they're kicking, kicking everything into touch. Oh, well, where shit, mate? <laughs> Coming through. <laughs> and they just muller everything. So, a bit disappointed they didn't call that as a ray right from the start, to be honest. Oh, I've got a blood blister there. Pop that one. Um, yeah. Doggies and rays so far. We want some taupe. That's what we want. <laughs> It's all right though, isn't it? I love the ray. Absolutely loves the ray. Everyone else seems quiet. I'm not really seeing anyone else catch much. Charter boys. I think they're all sat having a beer. <laughs> um, right. Bait up. Get down. Oh. <laughs> oh, get. Yeah, there's definitely something on the end of that. <laughs> Hope it's going well. This. Oh. Yeah, bit of weight to that one. That started to arch over the rod. Only took my eye off it. I was baiting up the other rod. Oh, there's one going there now as well. Don't know what that. That's on a light rod, small hooks. Don't know what that one's got. This one's um. I can feel it rubbing against the line. I don't know if this is a smooth hand or a tote, maybe. Not very big, whatever it is. I say that, maybe it doesn't realise it's hooked yet. It might go chicken oriental. Oh, it's staying deep. What's that? What on earth is it found hooked or tangled or something? It looks like a tote. Uh, what have we got here then? Alright, bud, alright. Oh. There's a tote. You're not helping me here, mate. He's only a small one. Right, 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 right. Oh, and he's released himself. <laughs> I didn't get a camera shot. Oh dear. Yeah, he made a mess of that. Right, so the toper here. He was only a small one. Maybe seven or eight pounds, maybe. I will call this one as a tope, the way it's going. Um, pretty aggressive, right under the boat. It's swimming towards me now. Well, he's had a couple of runs, but he's um, it feels like it might be a smaller one, like just a lively one. Yeah, like a live wire. Let's see. Usually, sometimes you can actually see other fish following them up when they're like this. Oh no, I can see him down there. I can see the shape. So he ain't got me tangled up in you. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, so he's got me on something. Has he got me on that other? Oh, he's got me tangled up. That's why. Right, let's get him in quick. He's hooked in the scissors. And he's tangled. Here we go, tangle free. Let's get you unhooked, mate. Nicely in the jaws. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. Okay, he 
he's unhooked. Oh, trying to bite me. <laughs> Support him. There we go. <laughs> he was a cheeky monkey. <laughs> he's only small. Five, six pound maybe? Four and a half, five pound? I don't, you know I'm rubbish at this. Um, yeah, nicely hooked in the scissors. Again, we love looking, but look at that eye. It's amazing. Isn't it? Totally different design to what we've got. But it does the job. Let's get this bad boy back in. There you go, mate. He's away. All right. That was carnage, wasn't it? Absolute carnage. And he made, a, he made a right mess. That was that whole mackerel fillet. That's what he did to it. And just feel that mono. Yeah, it's good to go. You can use that hook snood again. Uh, right. I need to sort out that tangle because that is still tangled. I just managed to get the fish released. Okay, right. One toe. It's all carnage. Right. Uh, just been speaking to Darren. Uh, not really concentrating on what I'm doing, to be honest. Oh. All right, mate. All right, 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 all right,
running down the center of the fish. So then we run that all the way down. All the way down. And then we have just got a hook sat proud on one side of his grid. Like that, really proud, but at the head. So predators tend to take their prey from the head. And then just to secure it there, and to make sure that things like the gills don't flap around and the mouth is actually elastic shut, I am going to run a little bit of elastic round. And it's a slippery old affair, you know the score. None of this stuff is easy, especially when you're not when you're doing it on camera. <laughs> it's always easier when it's off camera. Okay, we're into the home straight. Let's have a look, see what we got. So my first attempt isn't that pretty. I will admit that. This is my first attempt at doing it this way. It's a big old bait. And then what we don't want it to do is tear out at the tail. So these are like strengtheners to stop the line from tearing out of its socket. And as long as that sits in there nice, the whole bait's gonna sit nice. Okay, one more quick wazzle through. And the finale, straighten the bait out, tie it off. I'm gonna go tie it off once more. Okay, I'm pleased with that. From my first attempt, that's not bad. So that's it with the hook proud. That's the mackerel, the line running down the center. Whatever the tote bites now, the line's got some protection. It's running down the center of the fish not along the surface and then elastic on I've run it through the center of the fish that I'm hoping is going to get me a whopper right I need to sort myself out get that baited and weighted and get it back down the bottom I'm surprised I've still not caught anything on those feathers over the side all right let's get this clipped on I'll move the camera I think we'll go down a size of weight again because the tie is proper slackening off Go for a 12, so we've gone two pound, 15 ounce, 12 ounce. This one's gonna have the dirty great big mat core on it. And clip that on. It's the beauty of clip on traces. That lovely fresh mackerel. Get it out there. As my buddy Chris would say, doing the business. All right. Nice and slow going down as well, so we don't want all that effort to now get tangled up. Nice and slow down, otherwise it will helicopter around the main line. So one boat's left. Darren, Luke and Kaz have just turned up. They're at anchor now. I've got a fair idea what their plan's going to be, because later on when the tide runs, I reckon they'll go and search a bass. Um, let's have a tidy up. And everything, everything's good. That's us fishing again. That's as much drag as I dare. A tiny little bit more, you know, I'm gonna push my luck. Look at that, and that isn't even moving. Oh, oh. has that just come off? It, oh, I bet it has as well. Oh. That was a tote, definitely, and a significant one at that. Wow. Let's have a look, see what damage it's done to the bait. What was going on there then? Look at what it did to that. <laughs> Whatever that was, was big. Look what it just did to that. It absolutely caved in that head, that mackerel. It's just smashed it. That is mad. Well, whatever that was, was significant. <clears throat> yeah, and the way it went, the rod just went. <laughs> oh, you got to laugh, didn't you? Might see something like that one day. The big old creatures. 
trouble is, if you go rig heavy enough for something like that, just checking that hook actually, it hasn't straightened the hook or anything. I don't actually understand what just gave there unless it wasn't hooked properly. I'm going back onto my mainstay, which is half, half a fillet lengthwise. Hook it through the gristly bit, through the flesh, out through the skin side, and it will sit on like that. The fella that's just drifted past me, just held up a fish. He's just caught a, a turbot drifting, and turbot like longer strips. So if there's any turbot about, I wouldn't mind one. But I think to be honest, you've got to have the movement. You've got to have the movement. <laughs> that's crazy that rod. Of all the rods to go, it'd be this one, wouldn't it? The one that wasn't the heavy one. Um, yeah, turbot would be nice. That's what we had so far then, just to recount. The tide's just starting to pick up, so hopefully it will start fishing again. It's gone into a bit of a lull for the last hour or so. Oh, there we go. I'm not going to put that one back down. That might be the same fish back again. Because that is <laughs> the same rod. Um, right, take two. <laughs> That's funny how it picks up the same rod. There's all those, but yeah, this is significant. Oh, look at that. I'm not going to be beast in this one. Let the rod do the right work. Let the rod tip do the work. Come on, Mark. Angle of the dangle. Sort of helps me that that rod didn't go back in, actually. Just in case he decides to start darting around. Which they do. It's got to come up a hundred feet yet. Well, this might take a while. Half a wind at a time. That rod tip's really cranked over. It's a lovely fight on a rod like this. I had to wait a long time for this today though, for something significant. And obviously I'm not talking too soon because I haven't landed it yet, but I honestly thought it was going to fish better than this today, as in more lively. It started out promising, went very slack after a while. Right underneath the boat, still deep, but down under the boat. I'm going to reel that one in a bit more, just to get that out. I know what he's going to do. He's going to dash for underneath the boat. I'm trying to guide him out from under the boat, to be honest. At the moment, it's just slow and steady. Nothing too crazy at the moment, but I'm pretty sure as soon as he comes near the surface, this fish isn't spent by a long, by a long stretch. I'm starting to double, I'm starting to question myself now. It's got a lot of weight to it, but it's not swimming like a tope. Unless, it just doesn't know he's hooked yet. Oh no, what have I got? Oh no, I think it's a ray. But significant. Oh. Here we go. What's that? That's a clonk. Oh yeah. It comes spiraling up in the tide. That's why. That's why I didn't think it felt like a ray. Come on, bub. Just want to say hello. Come on, bub. Oh. Nice. Another thorn back. And there we have it. A stunning male thornback ray. He's trying to spike me. <laughs> He's up, pup. I'll put you back. I'll put you back. I'm not going to eat you. Huh? There he is. Look at that. Flapping his flappers. <laughs> well, that was a nice surprise. Let's get him back. And away he goes. Oh. Is 
he swam upside down. Um, yeah, what a nice surprise. Trying to get me up around that. It went off like a taupe. <laughs> and then it didn't, <laughs> which is why I started to doubt myself. Oh, right. <laughs> so, three taupe, three race. Lots of doggies. Same rod, same rig, and I'm in again. The other rods aren't getting a, aren't getting a look in. This one's getting all the action. And again, it's lively, whatever it is. But it seems to be, even though I'm using big hooks, I'm using Ato hooks, um, it seems to be the smaller strips of bait seem to be winning, as opposed to the whole mackerel, whole fillet, whole head. Whole head's hardly getting a look in, really. I know I got smashed up early on that, but that's, that was the exception. Um, again, I'm not sure what to call on this one. It's straight up and down. Oh, no, it is swimming. It's a long fish. So it's either going to be a small taupe or a hound. I've got a feeling it's a taupe. It's a nice taupe. That came in a bit easy for what it is. That seems to be about the stamp of it today. <laughs> it's quite a chunky one, that one, actually. It's got a few lice on it. I'm going to try and get these lice off. I don't like them. They're horrible. Obviously parasitic, but, you know... If you can do the fish a favour and get rid of them for them. Let's see if I can get those off. It's stunning. Go like the absolute clappers, don't they? Like a greyhound. <laughs> Amazing fish. <laughs> and away he goes. Like a rocket. Just been talking on the radio to Mike, Mike K, quality time fish and tackle. If you haven't already, check it out. I'll put a link somewhere, somewhere. But I get a lot of my tackle from it, it's good stuff. Um, and he said, try bouncing your feathers off the bottom. Which I have. And that's where all the fish are. <laughs> Got some live scad. Excellent bait for taupe. So, I was just gonna drop this one down again just to see if I could get a couple more. I've got six. I'm going to swap these static baits over to live baits and live bait for taupe. The only difference being, really, is um, instead of it being a dead fishy cut into strips, it's going to be a live fishy <laughs> swimming around. <laughs> if there's a lot of these down here, then the taupe might be preoccupied with these. Right, it's gone quiet. Get this in, quick as I can. Speed wind. Speed wind. Um, it's 100 feet. And then I've got to get these in and swap my baits over. I'm going to nose hook them. So if anyone doesn't like that kind of thing. Nine, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Five. That goes up in the rack. With the motion of the ocean and the waves of the boat, that works those feathers. So the next option now, speed boy. Get this in. I think I've got big enough hooks on for this. I'm certainly going to give it a go. So that is one live horse mackerel. Get him down. Get another one down. Get all three of these rods live baited and then when they're fished out that's me for the day today <laughs> so i'm in the process of packing up um it's been a stonking day one last thing those three live baits they all fished out two of them came back still live i'd nicked them through the nose i've put them back in 
will they survive, won't they survive? I doubt it. But the circle of life, they'll be in the food chain, or they've got a chance. At least I gave them a chance. One of them came back and I've kept it. <laughs> that is what a cuttlefish does. So that has attacked its back of its head. It's eating the eyes out. It's eating the brain. That came back like a zombie fish. That was still trying to swim. I put him out of his misery. Um, that was attacked by a cuttlefish and that's what it does. They must grab onto the back and with that beak just start eating away. But yeah, that's what they do. Still take the fillets off that. Still, still good bait. I'll use it. Um, or it'll get chummed down for shark bait. So it's starting to get a little bit sloppy now. Wind against tide, it's all getting a bit uncomfortable. I've packed all the rods away. I'm gonna head in, but possibly drift for bass on the way in. But if it's still like this, then I'm not gonna bother. So if it does, we'll cut to that. But if it doesn't, this... <laughs> That's Mike Cave and Darren McCall in the background. Might have to turn the radio down. Um, yeah, so from me, from here, for now, it's goodbye. Take care, and I'll see you soon. <laughs> it's getting sloppy. Um, bye for now.